Hello uh, and welcome to episode six of my Cold War introduction um, series. Uh, this time we're going to think about the idea that uh, Mikhail Gorbachev um, ended the Cold War. Uh, Mikhail Gorbachev was leader of the Soviet Union from 1985 through to um, its collapse at the end of 1991. Uh, most historians who argue that Gorbachev ended the Cold War um, argue that he did so um, uh, in, a, in a positive way, that they have quite a positive view of his policies. There are some who think he kind of ended it um, in a slightly clumsier way and that have a more cynical, sceptical, pessimistic view of his policies. But watch out for both. Similar things apply to, to both of them. So, and the first thing to say is that almost everybody agrees that Gorbachev acted in the way that he did because the Soviet economy was in meltdown. Um, and if you look at the PowerPoint that's um, attached to the Gorbachev argument, you'll see two graphs there that show that it had been steadily declining for a number of years, uh, for a number of decades, really, that, that the economy was was you know, in free fall. There's not really any dispute about here this. Some historians go as far as to say that Gorbachev had no choice but to do what he did and that therefore the economy is the bigger factor in ending the Cold War. But the Gorbachev uh, historians, those that argue the Gorbachev ended the Cold War, will say that although the economy was bad, it had been bad for ages, and none of the other Soviet leaders had done anything like this. That Gorbachev chooses to act in the way that he does. He still has a choice. He can kind of like put his fingers in his ears, pretend everything's fine and carry on with the Cold War, or he can act in a proactive and positive way. And he does chooses to do that. Um, you'll also see um, a graph that shows how the Soviet economy was still kind of just about going up, but that the gap between the Soviet economy and the American economy, let alone the other economies of Western Europe, is growing steadily year on year. So there is an economic imperative. However, uh, people kind of look at Gorbachev and suggest um, four main areas in which he contributes to the ending of the Cold War. And the first one is just like who he is, his personality. He's quite a different type of Soviet leader than previous ones. He is university educated. He wears kind of Western clothes. He's quite amiable. He strikes up a good rapport with Western leaders. First of all, with uh, Margaret Thatcher, who he visits even before becoming um, the official leader of the Soviet Union. And she says, this is a man we can do business with. Um, and then with um, Reagan. There hadn't been a summit between Reagan um, and the previous Soviet leaders. Um, he'd sort of survived through the tail end of three of them. Um, for six years, there hadn't been a, a, a summit, um, but there's one every year from 1985 through to 1990s, to the end of the Cold War. And most of the credit for this is given to Gorbachev because he becomes leader at this stage. Also, it's fair to say that his personality is important in that he says stuff, but then backs it with action, that he's seen as being someone of integrity um, and uh, um, that he means what he says, that people trust him because uh, his actions bear out his ideas. So that's the first way, his personality. Secondly, Gorbachev ends the Cold War by ending the arms race. Now, again, this is in collaboration with Reagan, but these historians will give the credit more to Gorbachev because in 1985 he publicly made an offer to get rid of all nuclear weapons by the end of the century, by the year 2000. In 1986 he accepts Reagan's zero option of getting rid of uh, intermediate range nuclear missiles and that uh, agreement only founders because um, Gorbachev wants Reagan to throw in SDI as well. He doesn't like the idea that the Americans are building this um, shield which will allow them to have a nuclear war without fear. Reagan refuses to drop SDI and so the deal is off. However, in 1987 it's resurrected and the INF Treaty, the Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty, is signed in Washington DC by Reagan and Gorbachev. This um, deal scraps 20% of nuclear weapons. Importantly, these weren't obsolete old weapons. These were weapons that actually had only been brought into, um, into the field in the late 70s, early 80s. So these are, these are current weapons that they're getting rid of. The key thing that changes between 86 and 87 isn't Reagan's commitment to SDI or a, um, a shift in his stance on that. It's Gorbachev, perhaps spotting that it doesn't work, um, is unlikely to work, but Gorbachev changes and says, right, okay, we'll go ahead and I, I don't need you to commit to getting rid of SDI. The INS Treaty, incidentally, is the start of a series of treaties. The next one signed in 1991. It's called the START Treaty, the Strategic 
SD arms reduction treaty and that was um, the start of a decline in nuclear weapon numbers that has been going on certainly until um, the Trump Putin era um, I'm not sure if anything's been signed more recently but um, also note that Andropov had refused to do this sort of thing a previous um, uh, communist leader um, that Gorbachev is ready to disarm because of the situation that he finds himself in because he trusts America not to attack. The third area that uh, Gorbachev contributes to the ending of the Cold War in is um, the ending of the idea of a Soviet empire. Remember that at the start of the Cold War there had been this idea that um, uh, the Soviet Union was ideologically committed to spreading Marxism, to spreading communism around the world, certainly as far as they could. Gorbachev really un uh, undermines that idea uh, and steps back from that idea. And a key point of this is his 1988 speech to the United Nations, where he abandons the Brezhnev Doctrine. The Brezhnev Doctrine, Brezhnev had been, Leonid Brezhnev had been leader of the Soviet Union in the 1970s. And he had said, we have the right to intervene anywhere to, to prop up a, a communist government. A bit like the Reagan Doctrine, uh, but for the communists, obviously. Um, Gorbachev in 1988 said, um, force, and the threat of force should not be used as an instrument of foreign policy. Freedom of choice is a universal principle. And so here he was saying, look, we're not going to intervene to help prop up communist governments, even if they're unpopular around the world. We are stepping back. We are allowing freedom for countries to choose whether they want to be communist or not. Now, he hoped, of course, that people would choose to be communist, but actually turns out they didn't. This is applied most dramatically to Eastern Europe. In 1938, he also announced unilaterally without any sort of quid pro quo from the Americans that he was going to pull half a million troops out of Eastern Europe. Um, and he signals to the Eastern European countries that whilst he would like them to follow his reforms and to be communist, that he will not intervene if they choose to go different ways. This leads to um, a Firstly, a gradual and then um, a, a very quick um, series of revolutions um, in mostly 1989 in Eastern Europe, which undo the Soviet empire there and, and end communism there, starting in Poland um, and then in the autumn, tr rushing through um, Czechoslovakia, uh, Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary and um, East Germany, of course. Um, Gorbachev also ends financial support for other countries around the world that they've been back in places like Cuba and Vietnam and Ethiopia, either that were communist or were communist um, sympathisers, left wing governments. By doing this, he stops being a threat, he stopped being expansionist. And the Americans can look at that and say, well, actually, this is the end of the war of competition for who's going to have the biggest group of friends, the biggest sphere of influence, the biggest empire. The final way, and it's connected with the end of empire, um, that Gorbachev ends it. So he ends it by his personality. He ends it by ending the arms race. He ends it by ending the idea of um, an expansion of Soviet Union. And then the final way is the ending of an ideological threat. So we've already seen this in foreign policy, but Gorbachev also looks at the domestic situation that he's in and decides that key reforms are needed to the way that the economy works. And because he wants to have um, a more competitive sort of capitalist economy, he also wants to end the secrecy um, that had gone on. So he introduced a policy called glasnost, which means openness, allowing a measure of freedom of speech and a policy called perestroika, which allows, again, a measure of capitalism. And that actually increases step by step through the late 80s um, as the economy fails to respond to his reforms. Alongside that, he also introduces democratization, which is, a, again, a, you know, a growing um, element of democracy within the Soviet Union. These things are critical because they signal again to America that this country is no longer a threat. It's a place that's trying to reform and make itself um, more um, friendly to the Western world. By 1990, there was a McDonald's in Moscow uh, as a result of these reforms. Um, in 1988, um, the new Congress of People's Deputies is elected um, again in Moscow um, and that was effectively the end of the one-party state and it leads to a series of reforms which actually end the Communist Party in Russia before the ending of the Communist Party in the whole of the Soviet Union. Um, and of course we've already seen that, that democracy spreads from there and from those ideas into Eastern Europe as well. So um, 
Polish government is sworn in in 1988, and um, Václav Havel is sworn in as communist president. Uh, sorry, not communist president, as the president of Czechoslovakia in 1989. Um, a former dissident now becoming president of that country. So uh, in these four ways, just through his final personality, being um, a person that they could negotiate with and trust through the removal of ideology, showing that they're no longer an ideological threat, and then through the two foreign policy elements of removing arms race and expansionist ideas that uh, Gorbachev successfully manages to convince the West that the Soviet Union is no longer a threat, no longer an enemy, and therefore removes hostility and ends the Cold War. Thanks for watching. See you next time.